we know that between 35 and 40 percent of the world population will be African uh, this uh, end of this century, an event which in itself is something that is extraordinary. All these figures uh, show one thing, that is Africa that long seen as a uh, subject for compassion uh, or for well, it was uh, more or less a marginal topic in the evolution of the planet. This uh, African continent, because of the uh, microeconomic dynamics and demographic dynamics, is going to become a central topic for uh, uh, planetary uh, balance. Uh, it will be even more central for its immediate neighbor, that is the European Union. So having said this, uh, I think we need to acknowledge that uh, we are going to start this discussion today, 10 years after we have started talking about Africa within this uh, type of conference, in a uh, situation which is not the same as that of the past. The, uh, with the, over the past years, African continents have experienced some economic difficulties. And there was, of course, the, uh, the collapse of the uh, petrol oil producing countries, uh, Angola, for example, uh, the uh, South Africa, whose uh, economic growth is still uh, continuing to lag a little bit behind. So, it's, so we have to consider econo economic demographic factors uh, in a country, in a continent where the revenue per, ha per inhabitant is uh, very, very bad. So this, we are below uh, 2% per year, which is necessary to maintain the purchase power of the population. But the African continent also has a profound diversification. We will continue to see uh, this other aspect of the African continent. Uh, we, countries, some countries have a 5 to 6% uh, growth rate. Uh, uh, especially in countries that do not depend on raw materials and who have uh, some of the best uh, world performances, they will uh, they continue to become to continue to be a region with uh, great reforms. This week we have seen Rwanda, for example, among the 50 best performers of the, the report doing business for the World Bank, an event which in itself something that is worth mentioning and which says a lot about this continent, which. Uh, is too often viewed uh, uh, from the angle of the countries that are going uh, through uh, political and economic uh, difficulties. So it is true that over the past years, uh, we have uh, also seen some modifications of our perception of the continent in terms of security. Uh, uh, we used to say about this continent that it was on the way to the uh, drop of the conflicts, uh, but now the Sahel issues and the now have emerged, uh, and we see that uh, we did not imagine uh, that 10 years ago when we started having uh, these uh, discussions uh, that we're having. We, did, we see also a lot of uh, uh, crises, uh, uh, especially from the democratic point of view. There's a new political crisis in Kenya, as we are talking uh, now. And Kenya is a, a very important uh, country within the, uh, the economic dynamics and democratic dy dynamics of the African continent. I uh, can also say that the, the, un, the unending end of reign of the NDC uh, in the African South African policy is something also that is uh, important to view from the uh, dynamics of political stability. So we have a, a continent. Uh, where uh, investors that we have around this table uh, are going to be raising a few questions. So uh, I think that uh, probably the, there is still a lot of people who are investing uh, in, in Africa. I'm sure JICA, GIZ, and uh, AFD are, can tell us a lot about the investments in Africa. But it's very interesting to tell them how they position themselves from the macroeconomic perspective, especially with the, uh, the growth of the debt and, and the uh, financial uh, bankruptcy of oil producing countries, which, uh, of course, the drop of uh, the investment in Africa, which has always been relatively modest, uh, even during the peak uh, years, uh, where peaks of growth, 20-25% uh, of uh, GDP uh, best. Uh, now this has dropped. The public expenditure in oil uh, producing countries is not as important as it used to be, for example, dropped by 10%. So the mobilization of the GDP, the mobilization of internal tax system is only th covers only three percent. So these people, these countries, no longer invest. We, we have, of course, so they experience recessions and they also experience problems uh, with the vis-a-vis uh, -vis investors. Of course, uh, investors with portfolios, for example, the bankers, uh, the 
are not here to with us today, but they are withdrawing. But perhaps our friends from Morocco who are uh, uh, investors, uh, we have seen a great resilience of the corporate world, the international corporate world. So we can say that investors who follow the uh, African demography, those who invest in internal markets, in uh, internal consumptions, whether it be consumption uh, industries, whether it be distributors in French, such as Carrefour, Longchamp, Fnac, Danone, uh, L'Oréal, Orange, these investors uh, have increased their investments in uh, Africa. And and uh, they still believe in, uh, have faith in uh, African demography, the growth of the African market. And I can also say in terms of conclusion that African agriculture remains very attractive, as attractive as it used to be. Africa has perhaps a problem feeding itself now. Uh, there's a deficit in terms of food production, but it is a great reserve area for agriculture the, uh, in terms of uh, arable lands and in terms of... Uh, so there is a, this is a possibility for uh, developing uh, agriculture in Africa. Maybe uh, maybe we'll have a panel on agriculture, nutrition, and climate. Uh, but uh, this land, uh, uh, African land, uh, agricultural lands, represent probably the, the first uh, uh, probably asset for uh, carbon uh, capturing uh, in the world. Uh, I can say I think that we place all our faith in Africa, Africa, uh, China, America, other continents are greatly interested in the development of Africa. So to our friends here present for the panel, I'm going to ask a question. How do you see this transformation of the investment landscape in Africa, and how do you adapt to it? Uh, what are the three main uh, topics that are of interest to you in terms of opportunities, uh, investment opportunities? What are the best three greatest opportunities, and what are the three b greatest challenges? Uh, that I would also like to ask them as uh, private investors what they can ask public investors to do, and to ask public investors what they can expect from private investors in a context which is uh, which has become a complex one. And to do this, uh, I'm going to give the floor, without further ado, to uh, eight minutes to Mrs. Miriam Banzalah Shakron. Uh, I think her uh, speech uh, presentation is that of that Mustafa Tarab are all very important in the, because Morocco has, pro, has a political and investment policy, which is particularly rem remarkable for from this uh, point of view, uh, and uh, not only. Uh, so, Mrs. Salah Ben you have the floor.